All right, so I'm making a lap siding attachment for my dad's sawmill, and he wanted it custom. So what's different about this is it's set up so it can do six inch, eight inch, 10 inch, and 12 inch siding. And there's different settings so that the difference from end to end stays constant. So he wanted one side to be three quarter inch and the other side to be quarter. So how I did that is I, it's cam operated so there's a an offset lobe basically and when you turn this it lifts it up and down and to set the different sizes there's a bolt that you can put in different um, selections basically so that as you crank it it stops at the right size for the different sizes of siding. I've started cutting some of the parts for the machine and I also started doing some lathe work so these are going to be the cams there's gonna be an offset hole in here but I haven't drilled that yet or board it. And then this is the set barrel. So there's holes at the exact degree that I wanted um, for the different sizes of siding. So there'll be a bolt in there and it'll stop on a fixture for selecting the size. So to change the siding jig from six inch to 10 inch, you just move one bolt. And then these are the rear hinges which these were pretty fun to do on the lathe. Got a nice little vacuum type thing going on. So I got three of those, which that guy goes back here. And then these tubes are the main body. So this is the very bottom. It's like this, and there's two of these here. And then there's two of these that are bigger that I haven't cut yet. They go over here. This little pivot goes somewhere around there. Then we got this body that will be the pivot arm. So I made this little hillbilly V block because um, it's a holiday weekend and normally you would use precision ground blocks, but I needed something, so I made it. I'm going to use this in my vise to hold my cam so I can drill my off center hole. I made serrations in this tooth here. So this is that back piece. And I wanted to get a little bit more of a positive grip. So I milled in teeth so that it can be more grippy. Very grippy. I'm making three of these cant holders and then they will go on this frame here and they'll all be tied together with a three quarter inch bar and only one of them gets this little barrel guy. So all of them are tied together so you can turn one handle and this will bottom out on this bolt here, you can see. So it'll bottom out in the bolt and stop and then you flip it up and around to get to the zero point and then back around the other way. I am making these little I don't know, dog tooth holders, I guess. And by doing that, I set my mill at 30 degrees, so I was able to tip the head. And then I'm using an end mill at an angle to go in and cut the separate teeth. This first cut is just here so that my first tooth is uniform. It's not very critical. And I already have this set up on the DRO, so I move, move down my specified amount and take the next cut. which is super grippy on wood. Little test for how grippy it is. Nice! Delete that! <laughs> nope! We do it! What do we do at River? Delete it. <laughs> Real life action! It dropped! Little show of how grippy it is. So I can't pull it, and I also made, what my dad calls it, a rasp. 
Should work great. Got my things all welded together. The wood will sit on top here and these little dog teeth will help hold it down. And then this is the pivot that'll pivot on. This is the bottom part of the assembly. This guy will pivot right in here. And my cam will go on this side and it's offset so as you rotate it, it'll lift the other piece up and down. And this guy's all tacked together and I'm going to weld it together with dual shield. It's a flux core wire that also has a gas shielding and it'll sound a lot different than some previous welding that you've seen. With this process, it leaves a, a flux shielding on top that you have to chip off. And as you notice, Mom, it's smooth and it's supposed to be. If you have dimes, dimes you've done it wrong. Gotcha. This is the base and this is the pivot part. So this will go in here and pivot like this. My dad thinks it kind of looks like a tank. You know, like driving around, got the big <laughs> cannon. <laughs> that, nice. Yeah. Boys and their toys. Yep. And then so this guy has a little pivot pin, which still fits, even after welding, which is nice. So this is gonna get bored out, and then there's also holes that's gonna get bored out here for the cam, and the cam will sit right up in there. And this is the barrel that will set the different sizes, so there's gonna be a bolt in here, and as you rotate it, there'll be a plate that's right here and a bolt, and it'll hit the bolt and stop, which I'll explain that more when it's all put together. This is the siding jig. So what we got, we got cams and they go up and down for your tilt. So this is the flat and then it comes up and over and that's your angled cut. And if you come over here, you can see I have a set barrel for six, eight, 10 and 12 inch siding and it bottoms out on that bolt there. And then when you come up and over, that's your zero. So you go cut, cut, cut. You got precision, precision shaft that goes all the way down and then all of these on pivots too. This is a pretty intense siding cutter, but we got a lot of siding to be cutting soon. 